Buying a tractor, that's a lot of decisions to be made in regard to buying a tractor. If you've got a little job, you don't want a big tractor. And if you've got a big job, a little tractor is just useless. Not to mention money, operating efficiency, fuel consumption. There's a whole lot of things to consider when buying a tractor. And to help us decide what tractor to buy, we have Tim McDonald. Tim, uh, you're a biosystems engineering a professor, a good guy compared to me. My name is Mark Hall, and I work for the Extension System. And when I need to know some engineering stuff, I call Tim. That's my Tim guess. is okay. good, and Tim has this uh, understands these complicated formulas. And I talk about big tractors and little tractors, and Tim talks about horsepower and pulling power and where the power is. Mm -hmm. So if you got a job, Tim, how do you? Talk to us about buying a tractor, buying sure. a correctly sized tractor. Sure, and thanks for inviting me, Mark. I really appreciate the opportunity to come up here and, uh, and, and visit with you about this. Uh, first thing, I, most of what we cover today, when you're buying a tractor, you're thinking about how much power it generates. So what I'd like to talk about is just, you know, what is it? How do we describe it? And then maybe a little bit of how do we estimate it for a particular job? So that, that's kind of the, the plan for today. So first off, just how do we describe power if we're yeah. if we're buying a tractor? What sort of things are we going to see that we want to uh, uh, have to consider? Well, first off, we're going to be probably see from a manufacturer it's going to be a brake power. They're going to, they're going to give us a BHP brake horsepower rating for a tractor. And what exactly is that? That is the power. Uh, at the crankshaft of the engine. Now, there are a couple of other places that, and, and that may or may not have something to do with what we're trying to accomplish. I mean, what does that mean? Uh, why do we use a brake horsepower? A manufacturer wants uh, a uniform condition or, or, or a uniform way of describing the power of a tractor to a potential customer. They have all different kinds of things to accomplish with it, but an engine is going to stay the same. So a, a brake horsepower, a crankshaft horsepower coming out of an engine is one way that a manufacturer would describe it to us, how much work it can do. Now, if John Deere and Case IH would both, it'd be the same number. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. they're describing the same thing the same way. Sure. And, and okay. there, there are standards for calculating it or estimating it or, or measuring it. So that you can, if it says it's a 200 horsepower engine, you can pretty much yes. guarantee that it's, it's going to be close to 200 horsepower. The, uh, another way that you'd see a manufacturer rate uh, a tractor would be a PTO horsepower. And, and a PTO, we all understand, is a, a power takeoff. It's, it's for doing other type of work, essentially, besides just driving through a field. And, and, and uh, that PTO power is, is a lot like that brake horsepower. So there's going to be similar numbers. Um, and then finally, the, the other way I'd like to share with you that, that, that you would describe how it would be a drawbar power. And that is uh, when I'm pulling something through a field, doing an agricultural operation, that's what's important to me. And that's what we're going to be talking about how to estimate today. And then the relationship between those three. Well, let's go through your, your presentation, Tim. That mm -hmm. drawbar power, I, I just tend to think of one, it's a 230 horsepower tractor. But if mm -hmm. somebody tells me that, are they talking about drawbar? Drawbar yeah. it would be essentially that the power we're putting to the ground, more or less. Okay. So, you yeah. know, whether it's an NHRA dragster or somebody else, yeah. you know, how much power your engine makes is kind of immaterial if you can't use it. And we use it by putting it into the ground through our transmission, our wheels, our tires, and then accomplishing some sort of work with that. So. And then uh, I guess the so, I, as a farmer, you, you'd be interested in, I, I have this job to accomplish. I know something about it. I know some sort of way of describing it. How, do, how can I estimate the size of a tractor yeah. just to do that job? So, to do that, we have to talk about, we have to calculate something. Yeah, let's sorry. Calculate. I'm sorry, but we're going to have to go through some numbers here. Oh, man. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> So anyway, uh, but first off, we want to define what power is. It's the it's the rate that I can do work. So, uh, um, uh, and, and the simplest way to look at it would be if I just lift up something, I, I lift one pound, one foot in one second. I've done one foot pound per second of work. 
There are 550 foot-pounds per second per horsepower, so I've done about two one-thousandths of, I've exerted power at a rate of about two one-thousandths of a horsepower that, uh, doing that job. And, and uh, so, you know, that number goes way up when we start talking about internal combustion engines. We're interested in, in calculating or estimating the power requirements for a job. Now we're going to talk about how to do that. And uh, to do that, we're going to think about the formula, the, the equation that we're going to use to calculate it. And uh, we said it's the time rate of doing work is the definition of power. So we can kind of imagine what the equation would look like. What's work? It's a force to a distance. So, uh, and then what's at a rate would be per unit time. So, we can you can imagine that, that uh, the way we calculate um, uh, power will be something along the lines of force and speed. And that's exactly the, the uh, for a linear system, something we're pulling through a field, force times velocity is what the power uh, is the power definition in that case for something rotational like a like a PTO it's torque and the rotational speed so rpms on that one but very similar on, on, on how they're designed or how they're de defined we can think about that uh, uh, um, so that force from a manufacturer standpoint that force is an effort kind of translates into something like the displacement of an engine so if I'm the if I'm the tractor manufacturer and I'm thinking about how to design a tractor that has 200 horsepower, I'm going to think about how big my engine has to be. What's that number? That number is really that effort variable or that force variable is related to the displacement of the engine. I'm going to be generating pressure above a piston. The bigger that piston is, the more area I have to, for that pressure to act on, the more force I can generate. And speed, that velocity factor in the equation really related to uh, fuel flow rate is what it boils down to. So, uh, um, so the more that's how I control the speed of the engine will be. If I pump more fuel, I'm going to uh, work faster. So, so that displacement and and fuel flow transition uh, uh, combination is what what defines that power from a manufacturer standpoint. For us, uh, if we're trying to buy a tractor, we're thinking more about that job we're trying to accomplish. Yes. And so we have to match that, that kind of a, a manufacturer's definition of power to ours. And so the next thing we're talking about would be, you know, what's the power from our perspective from yes. doing something? Well, well, again, force, it's still the same equation. Force from our uh, um, standpoint will be set by what we're trying to do. Uh, if we're trying to pull a pull a, a wagon or something else, it's it's related. We know it takes some amount of force to pull it. So, and then how fast we pull it, uh, those two uh, those two combination those two things in combination will, will define what kind of power requirement we have. All right. So, I'd like to outline now a procedure uh, that one might use to uh, uh, calculate out what's the power requirement for a specific agricultural operation, and where I'm going to. What I'm going to base this analysis on will be some data that's been published by the American Society of Agricultural and Biological Engineers. Uh, it's been uh, over many, many decades of research. They've come up with some estimation procedures for uh, determining a force number, for example. So I want to pull a, a, a plow to the ground. I want to estimate how much force that uh, is required for that. They have a procedure outlined to do that. And that's in the this, in this standard that if you look on ASFE's website, that ASFE EP 496.3 would have all these definitions. The other one would have uh, all the data that's required to do these calculations. So, uh, and if we look at how we calculate out that force requirement, that force is what's called a draft force. So we're gonna call it D in that case. It's related to several factors, one of which is how fast we're moving. One is uh, related to for tillage operations, at least it's going to be, or, or planting operations, going to be related to soil texture, and that that shows up in the equation. Uh, the size of the implement it takes a, a lot, a different amount of power for a two uh, two row planter versus an eight row planter. So the size of the uh, of the machine and also uh, uh, the depth for in, at least in a tillage operation, how deep if we're going to plow how deep we're going to plow, that's going to affect it as well. So all those factors kind of go into calculating it out. Um, 
then uh, there are certain factors associated with a specific um, uh, operation, and those are those A, B, and C in the equation there uh, that you see, and, and uh, those come from a table. So the, like I said, yeah. these have been estimated in the past. We, we look through the table, find the operation that we're interested in. That will, that will uh, give us our A, B, and C values, along with a soil uh, amendment uh, or a, a soil texture adjustment, that soil texture adjustment factor. We put those in the equation, bingo, we have our, our draft requirement. And I guess the easiest way to, to look at it would be just to just uh, uh, use an example. So here we go, uh, just picking out a 25 foot case IH true tandem 345 disc arrow that we've decided to get operations done in the required amount of time. We have to pull it five miles an hour. We have medium texture soils and we're going to till to a depth of six inches. Uh, what sort of draft force is required for that? So all we do, we go back to our, our uh, ASAB uh, standards and we find the coefficients associated with that machine or that operation, plug them into our formula and we wind up with a number around 10,000 pounds. All right, so now we know the draft. We had calculated out before that velocity, that speed that we're gonna that we're gonna uh, pull this thing at to make ourselves money, uh, or this is the amount of time that we have that we can devote to this operation and still make money. Five miles an hour is our key. Uh, um, uh, so now we're gonna calculate out the power requirement. We, we've calculated out the draft force, but we know there's other forces involved in in, in making this tractor operate. One would be just moving the tractor itself. Mm -hmm. uh, um, so if, if we know that if our tractor is sitting out there parked in a tilled field, we can't just go out and shove it with our finger and have it roll. It's going to take a certain, uh, certain amount of force just to move itself. And, and that we would call a, a rolling resistance or a motion resistance. And we can calculate that out. There are, there, again, there's standards associated with how to do that, but we're just going to pick a number. And I picked, a, in this example, a 7% number. And a 7% of what? It's about 7% of the weight of the tractor itself. So I'm just going to guesstimate. Uh, I'm just going to say, hey, I, I think that this thing's going to be around, based on uh, around 200 horsepower. Just go out and look. How much does a 200 horsepower uh, tractor weigh? It weighs about 23,000 pounds. 7% mm -hmm. of that, 1,600 pounds. So I'm going to call that my motion resistance force. And if I'm working up and down a hill, I'm also going to have to overcome the effects of gravity on that thing. So uh, we've kind of factored in there what's my maximum uh, hill size that I'm going to have to go up and down. We said it was 5%. Calculate out a number, 1,200 pounds to, to drag myself up this hill while I'm doing these other operations. So we add all those up. Our draft force, our motion resistance, and, and our gravity force there, sum them up, 12,800 pounds. And now uh, um, we're going to turn that into a power requirement. We said uh, making money, uh, five miles an hour. Uh, we, we know power is force times velocities. We have our force. We have our velocity. Multiply them out. Use a bunch of different conversion factors to get in the right units. And we see that that's about 170 horsepower to, to accomplish that task. And that is a draw bar horsepower. Right, so we said that there's different types of power. That is the one we've put to the ground. We had to put that amount of work into get, uh, making this thing go. Uh, we know that there are losses then. Uh, we have to reconcile that with what the manufacturer is telling us, which is that brake horsepower of the engine. So we have to be able to reconcile those two. What are the losses in between where I put it to the ground and that engine? What's coming out of the engine? And those would be two main things. One would be uh, just just uh, friction in the transmission. So what are the losses associated with that? And the other one would be we're operating, uh, we're putting this power to the ground through a set of tires. And, and tires are not 100% efficient in taking that rotational energy and turn it into our forward velocity. There's, you know... We are uh, deforming the soil, we're moving it around, and, and, and yeah, sure, there's friction associated with that, so anytime there's friction, there's a loss, and we're also, like you said, slipping. Uh, uh, we're turning the wheels actually faster than, than we're getting out in, in forward mm -hmm. velocity. So, that, so those, all those things, that travel reduction, all those frictional losses, we're just gonna estimate using a couple different percentages, again, or an, or an efficiency, essentially. 
how much comes out versus what we put in. And in this example, I used uh, 65% to say that that, that, uh, that was the efficiency of our tractive system. We got out 65% of what went in and 90% for the transmission. Uh, so multiplying all that out, we see we come up with a final horsepower requirement of 290 horsepower. That would be a brake horsepower or an engine horsepower that we would we could use in, in looking through the manufacturer's literature. So you need a 290 horsepower tractor to do 170 horsepower work to yeah, work. That's correct. Yeah. That's, well, that's in, in, our, <laughs> in this volunteer. example, yes. yes. So, all right, and the last thing, you know, uh, so now we, we have a target at least. We can, we can go pick a, a, a tractor based on what we think or this estimate. And, and uh, once we've picked this tractor, we found a candidate that we think would be suitable for us. We'd like to be able to see some data that says, yes, this, this tractor will actually do this job that I'm talking about. And fortunately for us, there are a lot of data out there about tractor uh, uh, performance and Nebraska Tractor Test Labs, everybody's heard of it. Uh, it's a, it started out way back when to certify tractors in a single state and now it's a worldwide ISO standard, that, uh, the tests they, they perform and they put all of their data out on the web. So uh, I think, it, so if you know, if a you have a lot of information, about sure, that. you have a tractor in mind, you can go find the, 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 the data for it and you can look through it. You can look through tables that would say, yeah, I've got to pull about 10,000, 11,000 pounds and I have to do it at five miles an hour. I can look at that table and see that, yeah, this, this particular tractor will accomplish that at about 75% of my maximum power. So I, I would have 25% in reserve for doing things like going up and down hills or getting through a tough section of soil or something like that. So, so that, uh, that would give me the confidence to go ahead and, and purchase that. Tim, to me, the, the the key thing is to knowing ahead of time what you want to do with the machine. Sure, sure. Are, are you going to bush hog? Are you going to pull a big planter? Are you going to... Uh, we don't plow much around here anymore, but in mm -hmm. some parts of the world, they still sure, do. And sure. that, that's real um, power intense. I remember sure. when I was young, that's how they'd talk about, well, that'll pull a 12-bottom plow or a mm -hmm. three-bottom plow. Mm -hmm. We don't talk that way anymore. And Not too much. And the other thing that you were talking about, how that, you know, you need, if you need 200 horsepower, well, you got to get a 350 horsepower tractor mm -hmm. to be able to have that 200 horsepower. Sure. Yeah. When, when, if you were going in to buy, say, a bat wing, a nine foot, 10 foot bush hog, and they said, well, you need a 130 horsepower tractor, would that be, mm. where, what would 130 be referencing? Well, it, it would say in there. Well, that would be, again, that would probably be, look, we'd probably be looking at the manufacturer's literature on, on yeah. the machine and they would recommend some size. And, and if we, uh, for example, I pulled out one, one example, a bush hog, uh, what was it, uh, an 1812 mower. And uh, it's a 12 foot uh, foldable, yeah. uh, uh, what do they call it? flail type cutters. Uh, and, and it requires a PTO connection. So, uh, um, how, how would we estimate the, that sort of power? Well, we'd go back again to the data that are available to us, that ASAB publication that outlines that. And they, they have a number in there that says to do flail cutting or flail mowing, I need about four horsepower per foot of width of that, of that machine. So that's a 12 foot, that's a 12 foot mower. I'm gonna need about, about 50 horsepower to make that thing go. If I look at their literature, Bush Hogs literature for that, they recommend a 50 to 75 horsepower uh, uh, tractor. And that, so that, that falls right in line. Uh, um, uh, we have 50 horsepower to, to mow on flat ground and have another 25 left over to get ourselves up and down hills, for example. Tim, uh, another thing I wanted to ask you about was uh, four wheel drive versus two wheel drive. Mm -hmm. what, what would be the when would you need four wheel drive and when would that just be paying more money? Uh, a difficult question <laughs> that, that, that um, uh, four wheel drive, I guess, um, uh, how, that would be looking at, at essentially just how much pull we can get out of this machine, right? And then what are we gonna look at it? We're gonna look at it as sort of a percentage of the weight we have on the drive wheels. 
So if I can correctly ballast and, and set up and, uh, my, my two-wheel drive tractor to get enough weight on the back wheels yeah. to accomplish this task I'm trying to do, then fine, I don't need four-wheel drive. But if I need an additional uh, amount of pull, I, I need more pull and, and uh, I can't necessarily change the ballast or, the, or, or I want to be able to utilize all the weight of the tractor, then a four-wheel drive tractor would, would uh, provide that extra oomph for me to, to, to pull. Tim, thank you. Thank you for your telling us this information that's kind of overwhelmed me, but uh, for our viewers, we, we, you talked about a couple of things. One was the uh, Nebraska tractor test data. Mm -hmm. that, that that's just all kind of information, but sure. once you get there, it's pretty easy to interpret. It's, sure. it's not, not yeah. a quick, mm -hmm. but if you look it up, Mm -hmm. And where would where would people find this? Just Google National Tractor Test. Essentially, yes, it's and, hosted and, by the University of Nebraska. So, and and that's good mm -hmm. uh, industry standard information. Sure, it's All there. Over the world. And the other industry standard information was what was it? The Ag Engineer. What was that other other? The ASABE dot org, the Ag American Society Google. of Agricultural and Biological Engineers. So. Agricultural engineers, mm -hmm. agricultural and biological engineers would probably get mm -hmm. you there. Sure. Tim, thanks so much for your help today. And we hope this video has been some help to you in buying your new tractor or used tractor. It's the same information. And good luck with buying your tractor.